Welcome, Management 2115, Human Resource Management. How's everyone doing today? I am Natasha Foreman Bryant. I am your instructor this fall 2017 semester. It is an honor and a privilege to work with each and every one of you, and I look forward to learning more about you as we go through this 17-week journey together. Um, if you have not already done so, I hope that you will log into our Blackboard Learning um, space online. Um, that's how we interact over the next 17 weeks. That is our classroom. So it is imperative that you log in, that you um, also check in to the attendance area that I've created. I'm using um, an app through there. And that way, um, you and I both know how often you're coming in the classroom. I can track you through Blackboard, but this is so much easier and it allows you to visually see as well. So you can stay on top of making sure that you're, you're tracking. Um, as you know that online courses, you have to um, come into the course room several times a week. I take attend attendance and then I put your attendance inside of uh, the banner attendance uh, software system that then keeps track through um, all of our administrative portals in the, the school. Um, there um, are some things I want to discuss in this video. There will be some follow-up videos that will go into greater detail on some specifics, but I wanted to go ahead and welcome all of you and to just share with you some of the things that you can find inside of the Blackboard course room. So, um, I don't know if you've taken other classes with other instructors. I don't necessarily do things that they do, and they don't necessarily do things that I do. So I just want to make sure that you're not expecting the same things, you, the course room to look the same way. Um, I compartmentalize a lot of things in folders and subfolders to keep things um, organized in a way. Um, it's easier to go through. It's easier to track. So the left side of the column, you will see course information link there. When you click on that link, you'll find the course syllabus, my bio, a um, information on tips to succeed in online courses. You'll also find a, a course outline and some other pertinent information. Make sure that you look at all of that. Um, there is going to be a syllabus acknowledgement form that you will be provided with that um, states upon reading the syllabus from front to back that you understand what is said, that you um, agree to comply with the expectations that the school has placed um, upon the students in order to perform well and to meet or exceed the standards that we've set, um, and that you know the requirements for succeeding in this class. So once you read it, um, you sign the acknowledgement form and you submit that through um, the designated um, Dropbox in Blackboard. Um, then um, something else that you need to be made aware of is there's a lessons link on the left column as well. When you click on that link, you will see a folder that has um, PowerPoints from the publisher of the textbook. There's a folder for weekly discussions, assignments, the quizzes and exams, and then there's a folder that says Professor Bryant lecture videos. Um, the lecture videos are pre-recorded videos that I've done for each chapter in the textbook. So it simulates us as though we're in a physical classroom. It gives you the opportunity to read the text and then, um, or you can, you can do it one or two ways. You can either read the text and then watch my lecture video, or you can watch my lecture video and then read the text. Either way, what I'm doing in the videos is helping to break down um, these concepts into smaller chunks so you can understand them better. Um, so that's what those videos are for. It depends on your learning style and how you retain information and whether or not it's easier to hear me before you read it or hear me after. It's really uh, your choice. Um, what I don't want you to do is to just watch my video and not read the text because remember my videos are consolidated focusing on some key terms it does not fully encompass what the authors spent valuable time um, in investing into that textbook for you to really understand the overarching um, concepts and themes. So you, there's no way to, to succeed on 
exams and quizzes and assignments just on my lecture videos alone. So let's be very clear about that. Um, so make sure that you watch my videos, you read the text. Um, something else, the folder that has the exams and quizzes, all of your quizzes and exams, including midterms and finals, will be done online through Blackboard. You will not be coming on campus, so all of that will be in there. Uh, the weekly discussions, every week, unless I state otherwise, there will be a weekly discussion forum that's uploaded into Blackboard. There you will read a topic or a question that I will pose, and um, you will then respond to that, and then you're responsible for reaching out to two other classmates, reading their post, responding to them, and engaging in a healthy dialogue over a course of several days. So um, each discussion is going to be worth between 15 and 35 points. They will state in advance um, what the point um, amount is so that you're well aware. It's also, of course, outlined in the, in the um, highlighted in the course outline. Um, the course outline that you find in the course information link lets, is a roadmap that lets you know where we're going throughout the 17-week journey. You can see what reading assignments, I mean, what uh, course readings and any assignments that we're going to have, when we're going to have quizzes and exams, so on and so forth. Um, quizzes are always worth 20 points. There's 10 questions for each quiz. Um, exams are worth uh, 40 points. There's 20 questions. The midterm exam and the final exam are both worth 100 points each. They have 50 questions each. So I want to make sure that's very clear. Quizzes and exams, that includes the midterm and final, um, will have one or more essay questions. I want to make it very clear that these essay questions are not, um, you know, they're not to see how well you write. It's how well you can express what you know about the concept, the, the definition, the terminology, um, the theme of whatever it is that I'm, that the question is asking. Um, oftentimes, multiple choice and true false questions don't give you the wiggle room to best express what you're trying to say or explain why you've selected the answer that you chose. But an essay question allows you to. So I'm not expecting you to write five paragraphs. You know, one paragraph is sufficient. It may even be one sentence, but it's allowing you to put in written form what it is that you think, what it is that you believe, and why you you selected that response. That's what it is. It is allowing you to succeed through critical thinking versus fail through trying to um, regurgitate information, right? That you may not actually truly understand. The best way for me to know if you understand it is based on how you express it. So that is that. Um, I want to make sure that you understand that um, I'm not sure what about other classes. This is my class. My class, we don't do repeat quizzes and exams. What I mean is that there's not an unlimited amount of times that you can take a quiz and exam until, so that you can try to get an A. That's not real life. It's not my class. Um, I've tried it in the past. It just does not allow me as an instructor um, and as a manager to know if you really understand the information because you've had too many times now to get it right. So I just, I can't do that. I need to know up front. That way when I see your grade and I know you took it one time and you scored an A on it, I can gauge you, you got it. If I see that you got an F on it now, guess what? I can come to you and I can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you about what concepts you didn't get, how you didn't get it. Maybe you just had a bad, bad test day or something. It allows me to now be able to work with you one-on-one -on -one so that you can do better um, for, in the future. So that's why I do it that way. Um, something else. Um, when you go into the Blackboard course room, I want you to look for the virtual office. In the virtual office, I've created many course rooms. Um, one of the course rooms has educational career re resource share space that allows you to upload any links, any articles, um, any PDFs or documents pertaining to any job fairs, job opportunities, scholarships, grants, things of that nature so that you can share um, this wealth of knowledge with your fellow classmates. Something else 
is that there are many rooms um, each week designated to study sessions, which will allow you to um, connect with one or more other classmates during that week's time to study for assignments, quizzes, exams, so on and so forth. Um, there are three weekly um, um, course rooms set up for preparing for the midterm exam. They are um, available three weeks prior to the exam. The same is um, true for the final exam. There are three um, sessions that are designated for preparing for the final exam three weeks prior to the exam date. There are also sessions that will be pre-scheduled to engage with me face-to-face, -face, technically, um, webcam, right? Um, where you can ask me questions about that week's lecture, about assignments, um, questions about that came up upon you with the quiz or exam or anything that's course related. Um, and so I will have my webcam on and answering your questions live in real time. You can use your computer or you can use your phone and call into that live session. And so those will um, be uh, available in the course room. Um, and I think for the most part, that is it. I just wanted to cover the basis. I want to make sure that it's clear that I don't do um, extra credit. I'm not sure if I've already mentioned that. But I don't do extra credit in my classrooms. There's no extra credit in life, so we don't do extra credit in this class. Um, I do provide you opportunities. There's a given period of time before the midterm exam that I allow students to go back through their grade book and see, oh my goodness, I forgot to turn in um, a unit for assignment. What was I thinking? I don't know. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot. I give you that opportunity. Um, there is a time period before final exams where I give you the opportunity to go back and look at um, what coursework post midterm because I will not allow I don't allow students to turn in work from you know weeks four and five in weeks 12 and 14 it's just not going to happen um, but there's a designated period of time that I will let you know and I tell you which weeks that you're allowed to turn in past to work um, because I understand life happens I understand that a lot of you are juggling work responsibilities family responsibilities and then of course your um, your academic responsibilities so it can it can be a lot it can be overwhelming um, especially those of you that um, are returning to school after being um, out of school for decades um, and this can be a challenge for some of you who um, are fresh from high school and the intensity of the course loads can be overwhelming so there's so many variables so I have that if you have any questions about this video um, or anything that you find inside of the Blackboard course room, please email me. I'm currently modifying some of the workspace, so please be patient as I finish those modifications. I look forward to working with each and every one of you over the next 17 weeks. I hope you put your virtual running shoes on because this is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, <laughs> with that, have a wonderful day. I'll see you in Blackboard.